student asked about problem 9 in chapter 9, so let's take a few minutes and look at that. This is a hypothesis test about proportions. So let's begin to gather the given information. Find your favorite R compiler and begin to enter the data here. We're given that there are 35.1% uh, successes in a sample of N1. So let's enter that information over here that is telling us that P hat is going to be uh, 0 0.35, sorry, 351 and that N1 is going to be uh, 693. Now there's a relationship between the number of successes, the uh, proportion of the successes, and the sample size. We can always find out, if we're ever given two of those, then we can find out the third one. In this case, we want to know the number of successes and so that's going to be p hat 1 times n1. Oops. We're given similar information for the, the uh, sample taken from the second population. So we're told the proportion of successes in the sample, uh, second sample. We are told how large the second sample is. And so we can find out what and 2 is, which is going to be p hat 2 times n, n2. We're also given that alpha is 0 0.001. We're not going to use that in our calculation. We'll just visually make that observation and a comparison to the p-value at the end of the problem. So here's our setting so far when we're looking at the three uh, distribution diagram. We had uh, two populations. We took some samples. We took a, a sample of N1 from the first sample and a sample, sample of N2 from the, from the second population. And we calculated the difference of the proportions. That's what we're going to need to look at. That's going to be the, the we're going to look at the distribution of the sample differences. And then and then we're going to, to look at, at what our sample value is uh, for this difference of, of uh, sample proportions. We'll move that down to the Z distribution and we'll calculate the p-value down in the Z distribution. To do that, we're going to need to know the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample statistic. So take a minute and look at our uh, review sheet for, um, for hy hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. And notice that when we're doing a two-population two proportion and we're looking for the, the standard deviation for the distribution of, these, of this sample statistic, that we're going to use this pooled uh, standard deviation. So we need to build the, that information in R. So we'll call that uh, P bar and we'll make that. So the pooled sample proportion is going to be all of the successes the successes in sample 1 and the successes in sample 2, divided by how many were sampled in sample 1 and plus how many is sampled in sample 2. So it's a pooled proportion. And of course we can calculate the Q bar as 1 minus P bar. We're now ready to calculate the standard deviation of the distribution of, the, of that sample statistic. So there we're activating this particular formula. It's going to be the square root of p bar times q bar divided by n1 plus p bar times q bar divided by n2. Let's call this sample statistic, the p1 bar uh, minus p2 bar, let's call it uh, p, p hat uh, 1 minus p hat 2. Uh, let's call that uh, p hat difference. 
So I'm putting that in the R script as p hat d is uh, the difference in the uh, sample proportion. Uh, so we want to find the z value of the p hat d that that we got from uh, from our sampling. So we've got this particular p hat d, and we want to find its z value. Now that z value is always the sample statistic. Let me show you that in the review. Go back back to our review sheet. And remember that that, that z value is always the sample statistic minus the population parameter divided by the standard deviation of this distribution of the sample statistic. In, in our case, this population parameter comes from the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis in our problem was that P1 is equal to P2, or in other words, P1 minus P2 is equal to zero. So what that's going to mean is that this sample, uh, that this Z value is going to be P hat D minus zero divided by the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample statistic. So, so we'll put that into our script. Z is going to be the p hat, what's wrong here, is going to be the p hat d divided by sd. So let's work this a little bit at a time and kind of check things as we go. So we need to show what that z value is. Let's execute our script. Ooh. Sorry, we had timed out there. I reloaded it. Um, so let's execute that. And there is our uh, z value is three standard deviations above the mean. That's pretty high. So let's put that in there, and just out of curiosity, let's submit that and see how we're doing. Okay, so we got that part of it right. So now let's look at and and see where we are at this particular point. We've we found that uh, that our our sample statistic. We found our z value for that sample statistic. It was way up here, three standard deviations above the mean. And so we want to find, because we're doing an upper tail test, we want to find this area in that upper tail of the standard normal distribution. If we had been doing a, a lower tail test, if the uh, alternative hypothesis had been less than, we would be doing down here. If we're doing a two-tailed test, then we need to worry about how to handle that one as well. Your situation could be different. Please be sure that you're paying attention to what kind of a test you're doing, whether you're doing an upper tail test or a lower tail test. Go to the review sheet and uh, decide uh, what's happening. It, the, the, what kind of test you're doing de is determined by the alternative hypothesis. Um, and and that's summarized in the review sheet. Okay, so we're doing an upper tail test. We need to find out what uh, what that value is. We at this particular point, we know this z value. It was uh, three something. Okay. So we've calculated that z value. We can now find the p value. If we were doing a lower tail test, that p-value would just be calculated as the p-norm. But our problem is we're doing an upper tail test. So we, the, the p-norm of z would tell us, let me just color that in, would tell us this blue area down here, everything below that particular z-value. We need to have the area above because we're doing an upper tail test. So we'll take one the total area under the curve minus that blue area. So in our script, because we're doing an upper tail test, we need to have a 1 minus the 
p norm, and that's going to tell us what our p value is. So let's run that script, and there's our result. Notice that's really quite a small p value. I'll copy that and put it into the answer. Okay, let's just kind of check and see what we're doing here if we need to do any rounding. Okay, so our our test statistic and our p-value were all, all right. Now, now we can begin to make some conclusions. Our p-value is low compared to the alpha. Okay, if the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. So, uh, the p-value is less than the alpha. Therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. P-value is low, so the null hypothesis must go. And consequently, there is the sample data supports the claim that the first population uh, is, in fact, greater than the second population. So let's submit that. Ooh. And we got everything right. It just didn't get recorded in the roll book because I'm working in, one, in a session that's... Uh, that's timed out already. Okay, that's the idea. Now, the, the one of the important things to watch for is what that alternative hypothesis is. We had an upper-tailed test. You, you might have a lower-tailed test, or you might have a two-tailed test. Be sure to check and be sure that you're handling that properly. Okay, good luck on that.